When Christopher Columbus landed on the shores of the Bahamas in 1492, history was changed forever. The Atlantic was conquered, and the Old and New Worlds were finally united. Well, at least partially. Still, over six centuries later, there is no physical link between them. The Atlantic and Pacific act as huge walls of blue around the Americas, forcing people to travel by either air or sea to cross them. What if things were different? What if a structure crossed the Atlantic Ocean, physically uniting the world's two main landmasses? Well, this idea has a long history. In 1888, author Michel Verne, son of Jules Verne, introduced a transatlantic tunnel connecting Boston with Liverpool in his story An Express of the Future. Later, in 1913, German author Bernhard Kellermann published Der Tunnel, a novel centered around a transatlantic tunnel. Popular film adaptations were soon created, spreading the idea across the world. Over the next century, numerous science fiction stories featured transatlantic tunnels, with futuristic maglev and vacuum tube trains. Still though, these were all fiction. Due to cost and feasibility concerns, a transatlantic tunnel was never seriously considered. Then, in 2003, engineers announced that with improved technology, a transatlantic tunnel was finally within the realms of possibility. If it were built, what would this tunnel look like? Well, there are two main route proposals, both between New York City, USA and London, England, as the ocean is shallowest and narrowest between these cities. The first proposal would start from New York City before progressing to Canada and crossing the Labrador Sea to Greenland. It would then traverse Greenland's glaciers, link to Iceland, travel south to Scotland, and finally connect to London, at a total length of 6,300 kilometers. While this route would minimize the amount of underwater tunnel, it would also be the longest route overall, and its overland portions would have to deal with dreadful winter weather conditions. For this reason, it is not ideal. On the other hand, the second proposal starts from New York City before progressing to Canada, traversing the entire Northern Atlantic to Ireland, and finally linking to London, England, at a total distance of 5,800 kilometers. While this route would have a longer underwater section, its simplicity and directness makes it the preferred option. Still though, how do you cross 3,000 kilometers of four kilometer deep uninterrupted ocean? Well, engineers have proposed three main tunnel structures. The first is a subterranean tunnel. While this design is very common and the technology is already proven, such a tunnel would have to descend up to four kilometers beneath the surface. The pressure at this depth is approximately 400 atmospheres, or 5,900 pounds per square inch. To say the least, this would present massive difficulties. In addition, a subterranean tunnel would have to cross the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a highly seismically active region in the middle of the ocean. Moreover, building ventilation shafts and drilling deep enough to geologically map the route would be incredibly challenging. Lastly, tunnel boring is very slow. At typical digging rates, the 3,000 kilometer long tunnel would take nearly 300 years to excavate. For all these reasons, a subterranean tunnel has been dismissed. The second concept is for a tunnel made of prefabricated sections that would then be laid on the seafloor. However, due to the aforementioned pressure issues, such an idea has been deemed unfeasible. With these two ideas ousted, engineers had to be creative. How could a tunnel be built across the Atlantic while avoiding the issues associated with its depth? What if we built a submerged floating tunnel, immersed 200 meters below sea level, tethered to the seabed by steel cables? Well, engineers believe this could be the solution. Such a structure would be sturdy and would avoid the issues related to ocean depth. In addition, it could be assembled relatively quickly and easily. A submerged floating tunnel would consist of 33,000 sections that would be prefabricated on land. Each one would be 92 meters long and 17 meters wide, with a layer of foam sandwiched between inner and outer layers of steel. Inside the tunnel sections would be both east and westbound train tracks and an auxiliary track, along with service tubes to provide power, communications, and access for repair. Once constructed, each tunnel section would be hauled out to the installation site, submerged 200 meters below sea level, and connected to the previous tunnel section with the help of submersibles. At this depth, the tunnel would safely avoid icebergs drifting south from the Arctic Ocean. Once connected, the tunnel sections would then be fastened to the tether cables, which would be anchored to the seabed by submersibles. These cables would be partially slack to allow the tunnel to sway with underwater currents and absorb the energy from an impact with a large marine animal. One by one, each of the 33,000 tunnel sections would be linked together, 
forming the 3,000 kilometer long transatlantic tunnel. In addition to the tunnel, another 2,800 kilometers of above ground tracks in a 100 kilometer long tunnel across the Irish Sea would be built, completing the link between New York City and London. Along this route, trains would zoom between the two continents. However, not just any trains. Currently, the fastest maglev bullet train in the world, located in Qingdao, China, reaches a top speed of 600 kilometers per hour. At this pace, it would still take 10 hours to commute between New York City and London. For comparison, current jets take about 7 hours. To make a transatlantic tunnel feasible, this time must be slashed. Fortunately, several companies are currently developing Hyperloop technology, vacuum-sealed maglev trains that will reach speeds of over 1,200 km per hour. At this pace, the transatlantic commute would be halved to only 5 hours. For this reason, Hyperloop technology will want to be implemented. If built, a transatlantic tunnel would be the largest construction project in world history. It would use roughly 1 billion tons of steel, 54% of global steel production in 2019. Its tether cables would stretch roughly 400,000 kilometers, the distance between Earth and the Moon. And to remove all the air inside the tunnel, it would take 100 jet engines working 24 hours per day for two weeks straight. Not to mention, the project would require immense international collaboration not only from the US, Canada, Ireland, and the UK, but from other countries around the world to help with approval, funding, and construction. Furthermore, it would take a century or more to complete. It would be planned, built, and tested by several different generations. Lastly, using current projections, it would cost roughly 12 trillion US dollars, 26 times the US interstate highway system, the most expensive mega project in world history. If completed, a transatlantic tunnel would provide some major benefits. First of all, it would serve as the first physical link between the Americas and Afro-Eurasia. You could wake up one morning in New York City, buy a ticket, and be in London by lunchtime, all for a modest price. This improved connectivity would unite the countries on each side of the tunnel, boosting tourism, business, and international cooperation. Eventually, this could lead to trillions of dollars in economic benefits. Furthermore, it would serve as a marvel of engineering, demonstrating humanity's construction capabilities and serving as a precedent for similar projects in the future. Lastly, the tunnel's hyperloop systems would run on green energy. In 2019 alone, 89 million passengers flew across the northern Atlantic, generating 28 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. By replacing airplanes, the transatlantic tunnel would completely cut these emissions, helping the world in its fight against climate change. Unfortunately though, a transatlantic tunnel would come with a long list of issues. First of all, a large-scale submerged floating tunnel has never been built. While engineers are confident in the design's viability, it is still largely conceptual. Second, the project's construction would be immensely arduous and prolonged. Trillions of dollars, thousands of workers, and dozens of factories would be required to manufacture the 33,000 tunnel sections and steel cables. These sections would have to be hauled up to 1,500 kilometers into the middle of the Atlantic, and submersibles would have to dive up to 4 kilometers under the surface to anchor the tether cables. Not to mention, this work could only be performed during very limited weather windows in the summer. Moreover, safety would be a concern. A tunnel fire would be disastrous, and in the case of an accident, it would take hours to extract passengers and wreckage. Finally, $12 trillion is no small fee. If the transatlantic tunnel's traffic remained constant at 89 million passengers a year, and tickets cost $200 each, it would take 674 years to pay back the initial tunnel cost. Of course, the tunnel would also increase passenger traffic, generate revenue from freight transport, and have other benefits. Nevertheless, $12 trillion is an immense fee that would be incredibly challenging to fund and likely take centuries to pay back. For all these reasons, a transatlantic tunnel has never been seriously pursued. In the future, though, if submerged floating tunnels are proven feasible and the political incentives and traffic are there to justify it, a transatlantic tunnel may be built. It would be the largest construction project in global history, finally uniting the old and new worlds. What do you think? Will a transatlantic tunnel ever be built? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.